Gaudi é foda, né? What is going on, Jaguars Den? This is Cameron Devon Crew in the building this evening, and I'm joined by my lovely guest tonight. We have the beautiful Emily. Hello. Indeed, where are you from, love? I'm from San Francisco, Bay Area. Okay. How long have you been here in Vegas? I've been living in Vegas for about three months now, and I love it. Okay, and what do you do out here? Right now, I'm currently a student, and I do my work online. I have a part time job at an insurance company. So, so far that's what I'm doing and we'll just see what the road brings. What are you studying? I'm studying business administration and marketing and management. Lovely. And we have the big homie, one of Las Vegas' legendary people on the strip. Tell them all, guys. all about yourself, man. What do you do out here? Right, so my name is Carl. So yeah, so what I do is I promote clubs, I host as well. Uh, we're running a couple businesses. We're in a startup. I'm going to mention that soon. It's going to come up shortly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much Indeed. it. You know, I tell them where you're from. I'm uh, from Guam. Yeah, so I come from a lovely small island of Guam. Moved out here a year ago, so I made that beautiful leap. So I'm here now, I'm just hustling and grinding. Big switch, Guam yeah. to Las Vegas. Yep. And we have the beautiful. I'm Talia. Um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you from, Talia? I'm from Minnesota. Okay. Minneapolis. What brought you here to Vegas? And how um, long have you been here? Just spreading my wings and getting out of home as a 21 year old and. Grabbing life by the balls, you know? For sure. Yeah. Okay, so 21, I forgot to ask your age. 21. There we go. Yee! So on three, everybody has to go yee like that. Three, two, one. Yee! All right, we're going to hop into the podcast, y'all. Sit back, relax, enjoy. We're going to chop up a game about Las Vegas. Maybe you're inspired to move here. Maybe you want to know what it's like to live here. Maybe you want some game on the industry, on promoting the nightlife out here and dating and relationships. That's what we're getting into this evening. Yes, indeed, DDP. Yeah, so y'all are both fresh here. Yes, very yeah. new. Well, what's it like? Like it. when you first actually touch down and you live here, what is it actually like? Um, I would. I used to visit a lot, and I just feel like this is literally the land of opportunity. Like specifically Sin City, Nevada. I would say. Um, but I've just everybody's super friendly, and I've noticed everybody just wants to see you win. Anytime I talk to anybody, it's always about you know, work and what I want to do in the future. And I always get free game or like, oh, this, here's this person's contact. They can help you get down this road. So it's just super, everyone's super helpful and everything just feels like the local is quite small. Vegas is big, but the local community is small. So I just feel like everyone's super friendly and it just feels like family. I've met so many amazing people just in the few short months that I've been here. And I already feel like everybody's just like super sweet and helpful and i feel like anytime i need anything i can ask so many people based on any different like job opportunity you want absolutely you know what i liked about you from right when i met you yeah was like you had this positive energy and i can tell you have a you. strong positive mentality too definitely sure you that need you that you need course. that to be here how did also, you develop that i would say discipline i definitely want to be able to motivate myself in the right like area and go down the right pathway but just discipline and just knowing like life is short you just gotta have a good time i feel like a lot of people in vegas are the same way you just gotta be out here do what you want to do do what makes you happy that's the most yeah. important thing um i feel like a lot of people come here to pursue their dreams you know whether that be in any type of industry i want to get into the entertainment industry nightlife and i feel like not even just based on money that's what i want to do for myself and my image and yeah. that's just something that i enjoy and that makes me happy not sitting behind a computer doing nine to five because i've done that and definitely that's not what makes me smile every yeah. day i heard you say earlier you, you don't have time for a job i mean well right now i also am a full-time student so right. i have seven classes mm -hmm. 19 units if you know how much that is that's a lot so i don't really have time for a full-time job but a lot of places yeah. don't want you for part-time so don't really have time to give it like a hundred percent but after a year i will be able to once i graduate but for now i have to kind of have things that accommodate because for me school is my number one priority and it's going to be until i get that degree yeah now you have an entertaining personality like your energy your career yeah what drew you towards wanting to be in entertainment in vegas um just kind of 
I feel like it's kind of the image and the connections that you make. I know, for example, Bottle Girl is something that I would love to get into just to get my, you know, foot in the door. And then you kind of get all those connections. You get that following. You get that engagement that you want. Um, also, I want to work with some brands, you know, have a brand ambassador for some more, you know, like upper brands. Because I've done some like small partnerships with like little boutiques and stuff. Nothing major. But I feel like once I get my name out there, people start seeing my face then I'll be able to get those opportunities that I'm really looking for. For sure. Yeah. Now, where, where can people follow you? Like, what are your major uh, platforms? My Instagram. Follow my Instagram. It's Emily underscore her Lombu. I'm sure he'll link it over here because it's very, uh, absolutely, it's yeah. very long. <laughs> and then also on TikTok, it's the same Emily underscore her Lombu. Very long last name. Please follow me. I'm starting to get very serious about content creating. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. You're in the right place. I know. Vegas. Yeah. Vegas is the right place for that, definitely. Now, what is your ethnicity? I'm Bulgarian and Greek. Full. My parents are like full. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm now, now, give everybody the entire stand up view. Oh, yep. the whole move. Look at the nails on her now. Look, look, at, the nails. <laughs> look at the nails. Look at the nails. The lashes. You know, the long get, hair. get that sideways angle. Look at that booty. Yeah, yeah you got the Bulgarian. They're not so, 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 Bulgarian split spots for a reason. What color are her nails? Yeah, what color are See, you didn't get it right. What color are the eyes, though? Yeah, that's very important. <laughs> Beautiful blue. How, how many tattoos you got? Just that one? I just have one, yeah. Okay, that's that's it. What is that? That's my grandma's birthday. So December 4th, 1937. Beautiful. She's the person who raised me and I'm the person I am because of her. My parents were always super busy with work. So every place, even she's like, I love Elvis Presley. Move to Vegas. <laughs> like that's, it was the first thing when I mentioned Vegas and she was very supportive. Um, the most supportive person even to today. She's like follow your dreams Even if that's like you get a degree, but you don't want to go down that pathway. That's totally fine Just do what you want for sure do what makes you happy at the end of the day And I think that's what I've always taken and that's why I'm always so positive because I'm not just worried about finances and everything I'm worried about what I want to do because rather than that like why just do something that doesn't make you happy It doesn't make sense to me. So this is my last question before we move of on. course what is your biggest goal that you have in mind right now? What are you most looking forward to? My biggest goal, um, I have a lot of goals, but when it comes to my biggest one, I want to get really serious about content creating and creating that like following on Instagram. I'll post like random things on Instagram, but I want to be able to have like that specific image that can help me get into modeling and just bring that opportunities. Cause right now I just post and I don't really think too much about it, but I want to start like being serious with photography and just getting on other types of platforms. You know, my TikTok is just, I've made a few simple videos, but they're not serious. I don't sit down and edit or do anything crazy. And I think that's something that I really want to start pursuing and you being know, serious. You know what you'd be good at is what? we'll do a, a collaborative video mm -hmm. and you can speak. Yeah. And you're attractive. Yeah, that, that you, helps. Yeah, so I'll put you on. You get a lot of I would stuff. love that. Yes, indeed. Definitely love that. All right, now, ladies first, tell us more about yourself. Uh, what do you want? To, I'm an open book, so it's hard for me to yeah. hear the question, what do you want to tell me about yourself? Because there's, there's a lot you can tell. So it's mm -hmm. like, what, what, so, do, so what do you, what what do you, you like about Vegas? Know? What do you like about Vegas since you've been here? Uh, so far, I like all the opportunity that I've seen. I've seen so much opportunity out here. Not that like I've acted on all the opportunity, but constantly you get people handing you flyers like, "Hey, just try to chat you up, talk to you." Like uh, Emily said, like there's there's people just talking to you all the time, and just the the endless amount of opportunity. Like you could go down the street or go down the strip and get a job within like ten minutes of walking down the strip. Yeah. Honestly, so I think the opportunity is really what draws a lot of people here. Yeah, it's prevalent. Like for a three mile strip, there's so much going on, there's so much industry, you know what I mean? And then and there's so much money flowing through. Yeah. That's right. There's so many millionaires coming through spending money and like that money can transmute you into your pocket. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you do later? So here right now I just I literally just moved down here. It's my first week down in Vegas. Um, I'm a nursing tech, um, going to school for nursing, so continuing that. But right now I'm just working on, you know, reestablishing my cleaning business down here and okay. just getting myself. Is that is that like a self-employed business or like yeah, you have so, systems and employees or how's that work? So back from uh, so up in Minnesota, I had a partnership. I was called KT's Cleaning. It was a cleaning company with residential bars, restaurants, and a couple of like commercial uh, commercial clients. Did you create that? Yeah. At what age? Uh, Twenty. Years old, yeah, so, yeah, about, yeah. so about a year ago, I that. yep. So about a year ago, I started that, and 
I dissolved that partnership once I once I decided I needed to get out of the environment I was in in Minnesota in my home life because for me success and like being able to you know really go after what I want it all contributes to the environment and to and to what surrounds me if that makes sense so it's kind of like you are the company you keep except with items and materialistic things so it's like if you're around like a shitty environment excuse my language that's what you're going to produce these crappy results whatever. Absolutely. however how hard you're working at it or whatever but that that's just me personally and i feel like there's a lot of people out there who have the same thoughts and stuff but it's just like you don't you don't know those people you know what i mean for sure now, now, real quick, what's your ethnic background? Uh, I'm Hispanic and Irish. My mom is this white Irish amazing lady. And my dad is this big Mexican cholo man. So, no shit. Yeah. I would not have guessed this. I don't know. That's what I said. Give yeah, me yeah, like yeah. another year in Vegas, and I'll have like I'll <laughs> have like a little color, color going on. Down. I'll be yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. more. Now, yeah. you gotta give them the whole 360 view now. Uh, what color are the fingernails? Fingernails. Blue is my favorite color. How, how many freckles does she have? <laughs> Whoever guesses it, I'll give a grand, okay? Her face is like a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> Do a little bicep. I don't like chocolate, though, so don't tell me chocolate. See, she sat down fast. You know, she's shy. It's not a bad thing. She's timid. Yeah, it's a little all bit. Good. So, let me ask you this. Um, what are you most looking forward to in the next 6 to 12 months? I think in the next six months, I'm looking forward to being able to drive around the city without Google Maps. Okay. That's one of the number one things I'm looking forward to. Um, on a more serious note, I think I'm looking forward to building uh, my crime basis and really sitting down and planning, you know, what the next 12 months or six months from six months is going to look like. Um, financially just business wise and restarting what I had up in Minnesota because if I can do that up there while well, I'm 20 no not no college education for business like Emily or anything just literally laptop and research um, if I can do that down here in this very packed condensed yeah. city you yeah. know and have an efficient business that's that's what I'm hoping for so if the business takes off do you quit college so the whole idea um, behind me starting the business was to reverse engineer my way from school because I, I came from uh, like poverty, like my parents, like we, we lost our house and my childhood home when I was like 12, we moved in with my grandma, we, it, it was a rough life, like I didn't grow up with a lot and everything I've had, I've had to really work for, so, um, that's real, that's real. yeah, so like, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so if the business excels, yeah. are you going to stay in college yeah. or oh, just go okay. to business? So once the, so reverse engineering um, was so I could afford to pay for college right. and nursing school right. and medical school and all that. Right. So once that takes off, it gives me the financial independence and freedom to you know branch off and do nursing or if I decide to become an astronaut or whatever. It gives me that freedom to, you know, explore at a young age, not not while I'm like 65, you know what I mean? Or like have to wait until that certain like point where most people have to wait. So yeah, absolutely. That's, that's where I hope to be. I'm, I'm very ambitious, so I, I see it, I want it, I will not stop until I get it. Ooh, so I have a good question. Great. I'll tell you something, there's no money like entrepreneurial money. Mm -hmm. That nine to five job money is good money, it's stable, but like, there's no money like business money. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Both of you, what are your income goals? I like money, so a, a good amount. <laughs> she just said paper. A lot of paper. A, a definitely good amount that you can't get yeah. from a nine to five. Okay, okay, okay. Let me ask you the same question a different way. If you could live where you want in Vegas, drive what you want, and do what you want, what would that look like? And take your time. Like a billionaire. <laughs> um, I probably live honestly. A place on the strip I really like it like a high-rise penthouse drive a Corvette 2023 and just probably never work a day in my life but I know I would have to but just enjoy my life and vacation traveling is my everything I can't stay in the same city for more than like three weeks I have to go to the airport and go somewhere else so traveling and driving and just being comfortable but also yeah. you know having that motivation to still work every day and get where I want to be do you ever do like vision boards or anything like visualization practice? Um, I have a Pinterest board okay. and definitely yeah. that Corvette is on it. <laughs> you ever driven it? I've driven my friend's Corvette. Uh -huh. Oh, I almost crashed it. That horsepower was crazy. <laughs> no, it is crazy. <laughs> yeah. When you touch the gas, it just goes. Oh, yeah, it just went. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah. But I How are those cars. speed bumps, though? Is it oh, you're right. You gotta go zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
the 2022 and 23s have the have the feature where it can auto raise and lower for you. Really? Once it senses really? The speed. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Lamborghini. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's smooth. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How about you? If you could live where you want, drive what you want, and do what you want. So honestly, I would driving wise, I would stick to what I have now because I love my little blueberry. I have a 2022 Civic Sport. I love it. It's on its way down here right now. Um, I would probably up where I live right now. I'd probably move to like a three bedroom, just like keep it kind of basic, but make it my own because I I'm happy like I'm happy with less like I don't I'm not a very materialistic person but the things I do have like I like I like them to be nice and I like to right, take right. care of them and I think like when I think about like income and financial like I'm thinking about generational wealth I'm thinking about my grandkids I'm thinking about all those things so I'm fine living below my means if that means that it's gonna help my future family because everything I'm doing right now sitting here on this couch doing this podcast or you know going back home and going to the gym or Whatever I'm doing after this, it's all everything I'm doing has an intent for my future family. Yeah, appreciate. and that's kind of that's kind of where my mindset is on you know income and business and building a brand or building a name. Kind of thing. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Okay, pause. I'm gonna cut this out. It's just a pause, a random pause. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody talk a little bit loud. Okay. Yeah. Let's get that. This is close. All right, you're next, bro. Ready? So the main man, Carl, tell us more about yourself. What do you do out here in Vegas? What what value do you bring? What do you like about Vegas? Okay. So the value I bring is before I moved here to Vegas, you know, I was doing real estate. I did it for about five years. So I built up this skill of uh, high ticket sales. So taking that and bringing it here, I feel like that would be very powerful, especially in this, this kind of market. Because where I'm from is, is a cap in making money. You can't really be a millionaire out there and it'll take years. I'm, I'm talking about decades for that. Here it could be within a year, within months, just having a proper plan. So what I do out here uh, specifically is doing club promotions so I can develop that system so I can create uh, rapport with most people that I meet. Like, you know, if I meet someone who wants to buy a table, he could be a potential millionaire, he wants to invest into me, which I have. You know, that's the continuous um, uh, type of system I want to create is work the club, uh, the nightlife, meet all these great people, build that system where I create group chats with amazing people, you know, connect with them every single weekend, go out, and uh, just pretty much get paid for it. You know, get, get, literally getting paid to bring girls to the tables or bring quality women is kind of like the thing out here in the industry so you know that's where I feel like that's kind of like where, where I'm yeah. really good at because I've been doing it for such a long, long time and so, you know a lot of high value men absolutely I was telling Elliot the other day I've never told you this but I was like yo Carl is super fucking good at networking like you know a lot of people bro you know what I mean yeah I don't have the patience for it but like you're super good at that oh yeah so <laughs> if somebody wants to like build on that skill like what are some few pieces of advice that you can give for that well, I'd say if you're moving to a new city and you want to do this, like for example, Vegas, I would say start with being a club promoter first, honestly. Like you get paid to actually go out and you get forced to talk to people. Like really like, like we get like pretty much pressed to do it. And if you don't do it, then of course you're going to get called out. But that's where I feel like that's the most basic thing you can start off doing is if you're going to move to a place like Vegas, become a club promoter, you know, first of all. And uh, that'll pretty much start really yeah. bringing it up. But like, like, what do you think makes people fuck with you? Because like, I know a lot of promoters, but they don't have your network. Right? right, but they're out talking to people. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? Well, being genuine and actually doing it. Cause I, I know most people cap <laughs> in the city. You know, like, you know, they try to boost themselves up in a way where you know they, they're trying to over sell themselves. But I think that's great. But I'm more calm. I'm more humble. You know, and I come from a lot of experience. So you know, I just listen. I listen a lot to. I listen to everybody. So I feel like being that being that genuine person. That's the most basic thing I can feel like people are drawn to me. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So for the ladies, I have a question for y'all. What do you like most about yourself physically? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my hair. Hair? My so, hair. Talk to me now. It's just like, it's so, like, I'm, I just like my hair. It's yeah. just like, no one's thing. I've never really natural. had a problem. I yeah. mean, it's I dyed it for the this first time. This is you time. at the shower, right? What? This is you at the shower. This is me after the gym, not showering. <laughs> 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 um, okay. but White flags? <laughs> or my arms. I've had a lot of compliments on my like arms, arms and um, sure give a little, give a little. <laughs> but um, yeah, my hair. 
Okay. <laughs> well, I have a lot of assets, um, <laughs> but my eyes oh, are oh, very. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I like I like how you said that. I have a lot of assets and a lot you. of them. Go ahead, go ahead. But no, I would say my eyes. That's the number one compliment I get. And I'm yeah. like, have you guys never seen blue eyes before, or are you just like flirting with me? But. My eyes, I, I think, think they measure eyes. Eyes. They're so easy to get lost. Yeah, yeah. That. Like, and maybe because like the black hair and the light skin, I would say, yeah, the very blue. Okay. Okay. People can't really look me in the eyes. They, they'll look at me for two seconds and be like, oh, I can't. It's the Greek in you coming out. The Greek, yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's where they come from. Now, fresh out the shower, you're looking in the mirror. What makes you feel like I'm that bitch? Oh. Uh... I mean, I would just say my overall self. Like, I just love, just not even just physically, like mentally. I think I'm very strong, but physically, like, I really do like what I see too. I guess, but I mean, discipline. Like, I still feel like I do go out and I like work out and everything. So just like the motivation, but just I, I guess everything. Not like saying I love myself, but I guess I do. Love no, I mean, myself. Like, like honestly, honestly, break it all the way down though. Yeah. Um, I think I'm just very, I think confidence yeah. stems, but so, if so, you don't have- So, when I talk to my students, right, mm-hmm. I teach self-esteem. Okay. And a lot of that is like, how much do you really like yourself? Yeah. So like, from head to toe, break it down for us. From head to toe, I feel like for me, I like my brain the most because the, it, without like having a positive mindset and like that mentality that you, you're strong, you've got to keep going, you're not going to be happy with anything, not even mm-hmm. mentally, not physically, you're not going to be happy with how you look on the outside or the inside. So it's really important just to have a very like strong mentality and just keep yourself going, especially in, I would say in this city, a lot of things can break you down. Comparison's a big thing. Like when I go out, I'm swarmed with many beautiful women and I'm like, oh my God, do I look like that? I don't look like that. But I have to always just keep those thoughts away. And I'm like, no, you're unique. You look great on, you look great as being Emily. Like you're Emily and you look great, you know? So I don't want to, that comparison and all those negative thoughts in my brain, I just try to keep that out as much as I can. And since I've been doing that, my confidence is just skyrocketed. Like I don't even care. Everyone looks good in their own self, but I look great how I look. So, yeah. I love that, I love that. Yeah. yeah, it's a really big part. Now, now talk to us. <laughs> Head to toe, fresh out of the shower. I think any girl can agree that when they get out of the shower, they always feel like the baddest bitch on earth. Like, I don't know what it is, or if that's just me. When you get out of the shower and you look in the mirror, I don't know if it's the lighting, I don't know if it's whatever. Like, it's just like, you get out of the shower and you just stand there naked. Like, first thing that my eyes always go to is usually, like, my collarbones for whatever reason. Like, I love, like, I like seeing, collarbones just look good. Like, when you're wearing a dress or whatever, and you're out, like, you see collarbones, it's just like, oh, okay. That's just me. But, um, then your eyes naturally go down to your boobs, but, like, there's not much there for me personally, so I'm just like, I usually <laughs> skip over that part and then I go down to my ab. I'm like, okay, like, it looks good. I did my abs today. Like, I'm happy about that. I went to the gym, whatever. But, like, there's always those thoughts. Like, like I work out a lot. I go to the gym, like, twice a day. And, you know, like, I really, like, my body is my temple. And I really try and stick to that. Like, I'm really said discipline is a huge thing. But, um, you know, like, it. Like she said, it starts with the mind, and if you have, if you have a strong mind, like your mind is a muscle, so, like, it's just like, you gotta force yourself to love yourself, no matter what, because you are the only you that you have, and like, no matter what you dislike, like, I don't like my nose, like, I have a big bump in my nose, I have, you know, cellulite on the back of my thighs, and it's like, okay, some, like, I tell somebody else this, they're like, no, you can't see these things, and those are just your, your fine-tuning yourself so it's like you literally have to just you know accept yourself and uh you know if you want to change something obviously change it but at the end of the day you're who you are and you gotta embrace that you gotta love yourself or else anything after that you know it's it's gonna be hard because if you can't have that like inner self-love and you know just self promotion how are you going to promote yourself in work how are you going to you know project yourself in meetings or whatever you're trying to go about so if you can't do that within yourself first it's going to be really hard to go through life pretending that you're fine and okay with certain things about yourself if you can't one accept it two be okay with it and three you know just be confident because confidence is key that's gotten me a lot like very far in life confidence like 
like I've like coming to Vegas, like I told myself you gotta just be confident because like I don't I don't know what I'm doing. Honestly, I don't even know what city I'm in right now, but I'm here for it. Like that's you know, but it's just it's the it's the confidence. Like I've never done podcasting. I've but I'm sitting here talking, hopefully like I've done this before. <laughs> but like, you know, so it's it really for personally again, I can't speak for every other eight billion people in the world, but it's like Confidence really takes you a long way. If you believe in yourself, I know it sounds cheesy. You will go far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a thousand percent true. A thousand. Yeah, in my program, I have millionaires. Yeah. I have people who earn hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. It doesn't matter how that, much. That have low confidence. Yeah. 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 Confidence is the only thing you cannot earn outside yourself. Or buy. Yeah, you can't. You have to look in the mirror and give it to yourself. Yeah. Like, you have to just validate yourself. I think that's insane. Like, you see all of these people with millions or, like, billions of dollars, whatever, and it's like, they they can have all the money in the world, but, like, they can look themselves in the mirror and just be, like, very ashamed. And, like, obviously, we don't see that, but, like, it's, like, if you think about <clears throat> it for a second, like, you don't even have to be a millionaire. It's just, like, these very wealthy people, they'll look at them in the, in the mirrors and they'll just, like, they'll just completely crap on themselves and just not have that self-confidence which is sad because just think about how much better they could do and how much farther they could go or how much more money more they could make. Yeah. yeah i mean yeah depending on what happiness is to you whether it's money people relationships connect like whatever that yeah. happiness yeah. is happiness you know? is just waking up and feeling good looking out the mirror or looking out the window and just looking at all this opportunity all this abundance oh, yeah. the beauty of the there, like too. nature the sunlight the clouds like how could you not feel good? Yeah. But our culture does a really good job at telling you you're not good enough. So you feel like you have to buy things and be a consumer to get something that you're lacking. Exactly. You know what I mean? Being confident is the most dangerous thing you can do to the society. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. The most important, though. Absolutely. Okay, okay. So my question for everybody. What are you most grateful for in life right now? That I have both of my parents alive and well, that they raised me with a good head on my shoulders, despite the constant arguing, and that, you know, they they didn't, you know, do anything shady or ask, like, they didn't, they were just good parents, like, just having good parents. They brought me a long way, because they, I feel like... like, the developmental years, like, if I didn't have that strong, you know, core of like right and wrong and such like it'd be I'd be a much different than I am today because they taught me a lot of right and wrong basically so. I feel like I think good parents is more important than money I do too oh, definitely yeah my mom has taught me things that you know I, I've taken with me into my adulthood like you know insurance that like super nitty gritty things like you just like you would never think to think about until you just sit down and think about it It just makes so much more of a difference and then i share with my friends like oh how'd you know my mom like it's just it's you know like i think it's not to put anyone down but it's a big flex to like say like yeah both my parents are together they've been like my whole life i got i have two good parents that are that have raised me you know and i think that's something special but it's not like I'm not saying that in a way to put people down if that makes sense like it's acknowledging the fact that you know I'm grateful for this because I know certain people don't have this thing you know absolutely yeah. no no that's major yeah. you know what I'm saying because I didn't grow up with that yeah I grew up with like terrible parents domestic violence yeah they divorced sex and housing yeah so I learned how to be who I am from like the bad example it's just I, that self-awareness yeah you know? yeah yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Parents. But I always tell my friends, I'm like, yo, you have good parents. Well, like, go to your mom now and just say thank you for all you do. Yeah. Go to your father and just say thank you. I, like, I, I, have, a, you. I have a couple of friends who like talk to me about like the parents, like, oh, you know, like my parents are just like this, this, and that. Like they're just like, they're nagging on me all this stuff and whatever, and they're just like downing their parents like to a degree. And I'm just like, you know, like maybe maybe take a step back. And I'm not siding with them, but just like take a step back and kind of like think about it from their side. Cause, you know, they look like. That like you can't choose family, but you can choose friends, and like that is the one thing that my parents have always instilled. Like you can fight within your family, but the same somebody else comes in from the outside, you unite together, and like family is like one of the things that's like really at my core. So I'm like I'm very grateful for everything. Mom and Dad, talk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, pause. Everybody, talk about her. What are you most grateful? For? Okay, okay, cool. So what I'm grateful for is my son. To be honest, you know, he's a healthy, 
little baby, you know, and he's starting to talk now. So he just started talking a couple of days ago, uh, four days ago. You know, it means a lot to me. And uh, the bravery to take the leap to move to Vegas because, you know, I've been holding, holding back a lot. And, uh, you know, I finally took the leap a year ago. And being here and being completely aligned with all my goals and my visions and everything. So that's really what I'm grateful for. Just to, those two things. Yeah. The yeah. highest, yeah. So I'm really happy. Right, love. Um, I would say first that I'm healthy and the opportunities that I'm given kind of tying back to my parents um, coming from Eastern Europe, Bulgaria and Greece specifically. Um, second world country, They when they tell me about their life and how they had it in college and even high school and after that, just the way they had to live and like were raised is totally different than what I have. For me personally, I was like, I want to move to like Las Vegas and pursue whatever I want. And I have that choice to do what I want and how I want to do it and I basically get to choose what I work my mom didn't really have that you know she just chose whatever would help you know pay the bills and especially for my brother when he was born because he's a lot older than me so that I'm just really blessed that I'm able to do what makes me happy a lot of people aren't they just do what gives them money and it's probably something that they might not even like or something that they hate you know I've been stuck with like a server job that I didn't like and that didn't give me good pay but at that time I needed it so I'm really blessed that, especially my age, 21, being able to move to Vegas and just pursue exactly what I want. And down the road, I'm going to see like that taking this big, big leap of faith has really like, is going to help me. And I already see it happening just for the few months that I've been here already. So I'm super blessed for that and so thankful. No risk, no reward. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember when I left my small town, and I'm from Georgia. Okay, wow. Atlanta? Near Savannah, Georgia. Oh. It's a 6,000 person town. Like, we just want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember when I left, I moved to Orlando and then here. When I moved here, I looked at the strip at night for the first time. Oh, that? And I was like, yo, this is a, Elliot, this is a fucking major mega city. You know what I'm saying? It's not. But like, to us, it was like the opportunity was everywhere. Oh, it is. And it, and it changed our lives. Like, you know what I mean? Like, since then, we've become what we become. Yeah. Yeah. So Vegas that's changes incredible. lives. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Mm. Either for the better or for the worse. You just gotta have a good noggin on your shoulders. And discipline. discipline. You do, yeah. yeah. You, you need, gotta have you discipline. Need, yeah. 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 You have to have a goal. Otherwise, you can get sucked into the bullshit. You'll get you know thrown onto the wind and be... No, nah, you'll just be going out everywhere. Like, it's But so definitely, easy. but to an extent, sometimes when I've gone out, I've met really important people and That's like true. really high up people and I'm like oh if I decided to stay home I wouldn't have met them and I wouldn't have followed them and they even followed me on Instagram and they're like following isn't everything but you know I went out and someone with like 300k I was talking yeah. to them she's an influencer and I was like super thankful and we were able to talk and stuff and I'm just like wow this is just me going to the club like just in the bay me going to the club I wouldn't have met any of these important people but here you can really run into anyone and just see some really inspiring people. So to an extent, I feel like just even going out here, that could just be a job in itself because just communicating and net the biggest word in Vegas to take home is networking. That's everything I in agree. Vegas. I agree. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Make sure you have a LinkedIn. Make sure you have Instagram. No, I'm just The OnlyFans are already too. No, no, no. The, the, the major thing is make sure you go out and put yourself out there. Actually talk to people. Be social. Oh, you have to. You can't be in your show. Great things never came from comfort zones. 100%. Yeah. You have you to talk. You'll level. get tired, but you got to keep talking and talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And I would say helps. you also have to believe in yourself. Like, yeah. If you don't feel like you have value to offer, people are going to be repulsed by you. Yeah. It's like going back you, to that confidence, you know? Yeah. Like, believe in it and like... The you have to talk yourself. up on yourself yeah. to people. Yeah, you have to literally look in the mirror and look at yourself and say whatever you need to say in order to hype yourself up, in order to go do what you need to do to get it done. Yeah. yeah, your life will never be worse by thinking that you're that bitch or you're that nigga. You know what I mean? Like you have to say that every morning when you wake person. up. The worst yeah. thing that could happen if you go and try and talk to people is that you know you fumble over your words. But like, okay, you move on in the next ten seconds and you don't look back and yeah. then you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad, and then you're confident. And slowly starts building, and you just keep doing it. Just keep going out. Keep going. 100. Yeah. Fuck with the music. It's pretty good. No, I mean like. <laughs> no, I mean. It's, is, is it okay? It's, it's, it's just more shit. Okay. Yeah, cool. It's just quiet. That's all good. 
Also, another thing, if you're coming to Vegas, eventually have a business card. Nine out of ten people I know, even your Uber drivers, will have a business card. Right. Everything, here's my business card. Right. Oh, fine. you you need your nails done. Here you go. There you go. Oh, you don't feel good. You're hungover. He's I have funny. a business. Like, I got a recovery just, business. Just, yeah, yeah <laughs> everything. Oh, you need an ID right now. I do that too. I'm a doctor. Every, by the way, too, and I drive Uber. Every yeah. nursing sooner or later, we'll yeah. do that. No. Yeah. Nursing. Everything. Oh, that's correct, yeah. No, this is hustle city for sure. It is definitely hustle city. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah, you can get money out of here if you want to work. Yeah. Okay. You got any questions? Uh, good so far. Yeah, All right. I have some questions later, but I want y'all to go. Yeah. So, what questions do y'all have for the group, for me and Carl? Um, what made you want to, like, what, what brought us here together today? What made us want to conjoin today? Is that, is Carl that- contacted me. I have a podcast. I have. A big audience on platforms. Carl contacted me. He was like, "Hey man, I have two women, beautiful, that want to be on the platform, and we can talk about Vegas relationships, dating, cool stuff." And that was it. I don't know how y'all met, but yeah, I mean, Carl. the network. <laughs> the network. Yeah. 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 Back to networking. Yep. Back to networking. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, was talking to him about that. Yeah. I was like, I when we met, I was talking about opportunity and how I just want to get my face out there, start growing my platform because. I come from the Bay, I don't have a really big platform, too serious about it, so I want to, he was like, you need opportunities, I got you, I have people on podcasts, come to this event, you know, do this, and any opportunity I can get in Vegas, I'm taking it, <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't care if it's paid or not, just getting my face out there is really important to me, just like you tagging me, you know, some little stuff like that, I've gotten so much opportunity and that's going to help me tremendously yeah, 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 grow my yeah. platform. Yeah, absolutely. No, and like, I really want to give you this advice, I'm, I'm so serious. Um, and you as well, which is that you can speak and y'all are both beautiful women. That's very important. Far <laughs> and few between, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if you can bring a unique insight and relate to women who co- who want to be in your situation or like relate to you in a way, mm-hmm. that's really how you get the views. You know what I mean? Being Isn't relatable. Like, yeah, and like having a story and having a message. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. Like that will do like that will do way more than back shots, I promise you. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. Like having like, when you say having like the story, it's like, you can have a story, but it's like, how are you supposed to give advice or give, give these, give this content if it's like, if you don't have, so like, what is your experience, like what is your best experiences that you can bring to the podcast to like, you you mean mean like, like like, like like your life coach, what makes you qualify, not qualifying, like what, what is the what is the best story or experience that made you be like, hey, I want to go out and help people? Like, oh, this, for me, this, yeah, me personally. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, I mean, my my upbringing, like I said earlier, um, just domestic violence, poverty, all that stuff. So when I hit seventeen years old, I moved, I moved out of my house. I graduated college or high school at sixteen, and I had a scholarship to college at seventeen. I was a, Kind of a genius. Okay. Um, so I had like everything paid. I lived on campus. I was underage. What college? Georgia Southern University. Oh, nice. Yeah, which is where I'm from. Anyway, I got into a sales program. My older homie put me onto it. And then I had my first mentor ever in life. And he introduced me to Think and Grow Rich, The Magic of Believing, Rich Dad Poor Dad, all of Anthony Robbins' books and cassette tapes. And I realized, oh, okay, you can do something to feel different from how you feel normally. You know what I mean? Like you can control your thoughts, you can do exercises, practices that change how you feel in the moment, which if you do it long enough changes your mood and changes your outcomes and the things you're doing. Changing that mindset is what you're saying. Cor- yes, correct. And all the trickle down effect. Okay. And it changes your life. So I knew from that moment when I was 17, this is what I want to do. So I went on my journey of self healing because I knew I needed that first. And then when I got to a place where I was truly happy and joyous, then I started teaching other people, hey, this is what I did. You know, maybe it'll work for you, maybe not. I'm not a psychologist, not a psychiatrist, but I have seen a lot of shit. I can relate to a lot of people. I've been through a lot of things, and I think I'm nuanced enough to be able to help people through particular circumstances. And like, that's pretty much what I do. Wow. It's working. So. It's working. You have a very good platform following and everything. Notice. Mm-hmm. I want to get those numbers. <laughs> what, what about y'all? What about? Story. What, 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 what's your backstory that propelled you? 
I'm just I'm just the little girl of big dreams. <laughs> a lot of big dreams. I mean, I've always wanted to kind of be more out there, and I like I said before, I don't really just want to work a regular nine to five and just be you know have that lifestyle. I want. To be able to have my name, like be what, 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 what is your background? Like two parent household? No, uh, it was a two parent household, and then kind not exactly like your story, but it got very abusive and just very toxic. Uh, both. So my mom was always there for us. It was a lot of verbal abuse, and there's just a lot of different things, and it's just um, we they came from um, very poverty, very poor, and then. My dad was able to grow exponentially. He came from a very poor household and then made like a multi-million near mm. business himself. So when people sometimes are like, oh, I know her family comes from money. And I'm like, no, Bulgaria is such a poor country. If you saw their house they lived in, it was literally made like from wood. Like there was no bathroom. The bathroom was like a little hole. It was nothing crazy. So I just saw how hard my dad was able to work. But another thing that I've noticed is that money destroyed our family. So In what way? Um, it just split. I really wasn't around my dad ever since then. I know business, you know, when you have a business, you have to travel, you have to go places. Um, but that doesn't mean, you know, kind of like abandoning your kids. Like the financially support was always there that I'm very do, grateful do you for. Like your father manager? I don't say abandoned. I think he was there a lot. He was there financially, which I'm thankful for. Yeah. Um, but, you but know, you mentally, I wanted him there physically. I don't remember him. seeing him at almost any birthdays. I can name off like one and how many birthdays he was there for me so it's definitely a, a subject that's hard i will text him maybe like once a year if that like hey how are you happy birthday you know that's almost it ties back into like how money like yes he's giving you guys the financial support that you guys needed yeah it's like the money doesn't buy the house it never did anymore. and it's like you that was that was, to like him, a, it was like, oh, I'm a great dad, you know, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. helping you go through which college. Which a lot of men have been talking about. Though. Yeah, it's which like, is like, I, I am so grateful to that. I'm so blessed, you know, to have none of the student debt that I can, I can't ask for more, but I just wish I had that there. And where, I saw where, how where, that broke my mind. Right now, um, he's moving to Argentina. Oh, okay. I know, just the crazy. He has really good businesses there. He's starting solar panels and like, he has oh. a lot of good stuff going for him. But he does have a girlfriend, and because of her, I don't see him, unfortunately. What do you mean? Um, she's, she's crazy. She hates me and my brother. She hates my mother. So it's just because she wants him. I don't know if she wants him or what she wants, but she definitely... I don't know if she loves him, but... Like the talents are in. Yeah, I've, I've seen her one time, and it was like the yeah. worst experience I've ever had in my life. So I just really wish... I remember having that family there. Like, we all came to Vegas. I was like five. I barely remember that, but still, I remember that was one of her last ever family trips. And it's like really sad i love him he's a very hard worker but i just wish i really had that so everything i see i just want my family to be the opposite you know like whatever i've seen i want to work to do the opposite like he doesn't even know i'm in vegas you know because it's like i have nothing to tell i don't there's no reason for me to be like hey i'm moving because he's just gonna say i don't care so let, let me ask you this question what do you how do you feel like it affected you not having your father I would say I'm numb to a lot of things. Relationships are super hard to me. The word like daddy issues is very true. I definitely look for something that someone that can be there for me like physically and just like support me. Um, but I'm just numb. Like if someone wants to, you know, I just like me saying the words I love you. It's so hard. I don't yeah, think yeah. I've ever really said that to any man or if I did it was one time and it was like the hardest thing ever and it's just because I thought they were really there for me but I just have a safety net yeah. and that safety net is because my father hasn't really been there for me it's defense it's defense I'm very yes. defensive anytime a man tries your yeah walls and and yeah your, your father hurt you. yeah. yeah it's it's just such hurt and it's like I can't even talk to them about it and the way I see my mom talk about my dad she like still loves him but she's so hurt you know i just see and i'm like i don't want to do that that's why i'm so scared to have kids or i'm so scared to take the next step i've never lived with a man i've never you know i've never well, taken what, what, what are you scared of? just abandonment at the end i'm scared yeah, to yeah, give yeah. it 110 percent and even have kids and then be like okay bye like so I'm what, just scared I, what i would that. say is i understand what you're saying it's just like I, there's that's scarier to me than death yeah. literally but i would say that you need to trust yourself more yeah like, you're a good judge of character. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So trust yourself. Have yeah. confidence in yourself. You're not your parents. Yeah. Not. 
That's and exactly. You learn from that. And it's kind of similar to your situation. Like I grew up a certain way. I'm still very blessed for the way I grew up, but I do want to show like my kids and the next generation is the opposite. I don't want that. I don't want to have my kids like always packing a bag the next weekend or something like that because it people don't think that it hurts the kids when they're young, but it really, really does. It destroys them. It destroys them. You know, I'm at the point where. My parents, well, not my, my dad, my mom will maybe text me sometimes. Like, if I call her, she's like, are you dying? Like, what's going on? Because yeah. if I call her, she thinks it's so weird. She's like, why are you calling me? Like, what do we have to yeah. talk about? You know, if it's not an emergency, like, there's no point for me to talk to her. And it's, like, really sad. So when I see people have that with their family, I'm very, I'm jealous. I can't lie. I'm jealous, but I'm grateful that they have that. I just wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> You have a very confident demeanor. I, w I think I would have to by this point. Yeah, what, With, what, what, what is your biggest insecurity? My biggest insecurity? I I don't know. I'm big on comparison, but like physically or mentally? In general. In general, that I'm not going to make it. Why? Um, Because I have a lot of pressure put on myself just from family like my dad did make it pretty well you know in his business not person wise but like business wise and everything he made it pretty well and i'm like i want to go down business i want to not be like him but i want to be like him in the sense of like work wise and determination and i'm at the point where right now even though i know i'm young i just don't know exactly what i'm going to be doing you know um uh, i don't know what incomes i want i don't know what job i want to work and it's just so stressful i'm like am I gonna make it or not and I feel like I can't really put that pressure on myself but every day I do I remember why, like why do you feel like you might not make it I just feel like in my head I don't know what I want to do yet like people ask me when the first question I get asked when I come to Vegas is what are you doing here and like what do you want to do and I'm like honestly I have like some answers I can give you but I don't even know like it's scary saying it's the so words scary. I don't know yeah but that You're scares exploring. me yeah, yeah. well what what scares you Saying the knowing. words I don't know, yeah, yeah. that's scary. Why is that scary? Because um, I feel like every time I talk to someone, they have a good like understanding of what they're doing. Like, oh, I do this, I do this. And I'm like, okay, well, I know I'm still a student, so I can't really say I have like an exact job that I'm doing, but I don't know exactly the lines of what I want to do, you know? I want to make it really big, and I want my name to mean something valuable, but I don't really have anything that I could say I'm exactly doing. Like like distinct this is what i'm going to do in the future how yeah. people are like i want to be a doctor you know i want to do this like i have things that i want to do but i don't know if that's going to fit me yet so it's kind of scary but i definitely think i need to stop stressing too much because i'm so yeah. stressed even like the even, first even day, if you don't know what you're going to do yeah you should have enough confidence in yourself and self-trust to yeah. know that it's going to work that's, very that's true. the main thing that is very true yeah which I, I think you have that you're just not saying it I think I do, but I think I manipulate my, I think my brain's my biggest. You don't say you think, you say, I know it. I know I do. That's what I'm saying. I always, I manipulate my brain a lot and I kind of psych myself out. So I think a biggest right. insecurity I have is my brain that I need yeah. to work on a lot. So you need self-development. I do. Yeah, just do some journals. I started journaling. Gratitude. I did. I started like writing the motivational words in the morning. Yeah. Do affirmations. Yeah, that I started that actually in the morning. Yeah. It actually kind of works. I've been feeling it. Yeah. So. Yes, indeed. Thing. I'm about to check the camera. All right, let's take a quick break.